<laughs> Are you putting that ginger shot up your arse? No, I'm not. This is a organic, orgasmic ginger shot. Well, and oh. it's a little can of uh, apple juice, lemon, ginger. All the good stuff. And it's wonderful. But it I, burns you. I, well, I thought oh, you I love were, it. I, I smelt ginger when I come in. And I thought uh, you were peeling a ginger bulb and just sticking up your arse. Mm. Do you want to hear my joke about ginger? Go on then. What's pink and smells of ginger? What? Fred Astaire's cock. <laughs> Why did they even ask? Why did they bother? Ladies See, people, and gentlemen. That's what people pay for. You know what a little journey we went on? From a can. That's that sprung a whole world. No, that's just world mental building. illness. We're like, you're going around with ripped jeans on. See, this is what's happened, right? Because we've got a few more people listening to us now, you've went all hipster Pop. with your ripped jeans. No, but this this jean was torn by this. Out. The reason I'm wearing old jeans, I'm, I'm, I've am i spent days in my studio, hours. Hours. I will come and see you and, uh, later on today, and I'll look like a fucking coal miner's handkerchief. Oh, you dear. would not believe the state of me. I blew my nose the other day. It was like treacle. Oh. Crusty. You're getting black lung. No, just I, I, no, but clearing my, out your no, studio. My, but my hairy nose is is just and stopping it. Explain to people we've never. I've never explained this before in detail. Mm-hmm. No, I have. But to anyone who hasn't listened, I'm getting awful mixed up. I've only had two of these this morning. Now, explain your to them studio what? Uh-huh. is like the house out of seven. When you say there's punji sticks and there's traps with spikes on them at the door handle, I thought you were joking. And the mm-hmm. very first time I got to see your studio and I saw your work, it was really lovely. And I went to get the door. You went, don't touch it. Yeah, don't touch it. And it was all primed with springs and spikes and everything. And all the blade, all the all the spikes yeah. were, were dipped in cockroach feces. It's unbelievably dangerous, but you are sorting it out. Well, yesterday, the woman from Wasps appeared. She was uh-huh. doing an inventory, kind of going about. Yeah. She chapped to my door. And I said, hi there. And she says, I can see you're busy. I says, I wouldn't suggest you come in. It's a bit of a death trap. And it was, because yeah. I was in the middle of moving stuff. And her eyes. Uh-huh. It's like her eyelids opened and then opened further. It was oh like God. the nictating membrane. On Are you getting foot. thrown out? No, but you can do whatever you want in there. Yeah. The other, I was needing to get something from a high shelf. Uh-huh. So you know what I grabbed it with? What? A deer leg. <laughs> <laughs> I just got my deer leg and poked it down. This is... Now, I understand that you're a very creative person and you need these things around Well, I you. need to clear my space But you to need make to it... throw 90% of that well, shit been. out. I have been. <laughs> oh, my God. 500 egg boxes. Get yourself a beautifully neat desk area. That's all done. I've got shelves. I've got my desk and my shelves, what? man. What I'm going to do oh, is... Oh, my goodness. When the time's right. Yeah. You know on Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. when a husband comes back from the work and he goes to his wife. No, the... The husband's a lazy cunt, so he's in the house. Okay. The wife comes back from All working right. in the call centre. Sounds nice. He gets her at the front door. Oh. And he puts a, a blindfold on. And he oh. says, come on, look. Right. Do you trust me? Yeah. And she holds his hand. And he, he leads her through the bungalow. And he opens the door of the bedroom. Right. He's on the blindfold. Oh. And it's just rose petals. And he's bought her some uh, kind of washing machine. Right. Something romantic. I'm going to do that to you. So you get come up in the lift, blindfolded. I say, do you trust me? Do you trust me, Derek? You're going to go, yes, uh, right, okay. yes, go on, yes. Okay, and I'm going to take you into my studio. I understand. And I'm going to take the blindfold off, and you get to see the space. No. The clear space. If you ever come near me with a blindfold, one, if you get it on me, I know how it's ending, right? Do, do you? Two, do, you'll never catch me, and un- I hobble. No, this, I'm not hobbling now. This, I'm, I'm this, is, this is unfortunate what? for you. You seem to think this was a this was an invitation, a choice. No, though, no, this oh. is what's happening. And as far as running away goes, Does, I've got a set of those bolas. Wait, things. wait, wait! I'll wait. just, I'll just fucking. We're catch public you. figures now. This is a Me Too moment. You I'll can't just, do these things I'll anymore. Throw, I'll throw as a bolas. No, isn't but it? yeah, I'll throw my bolas at you. But have I'll, you seen the police ones that are a steel wire that you oh, fire? Oh, bolas! Imagine it's, getting that around the neck. Oh, it's gonna be like that bit out of a uh, Resident Evil with the wire. Oh God! Can we call in salmon? That's, That's lasers. lasers. That's lasers. I'm surprised you don't have lasers up there. So is it really I, that different up there? Is it really? There's a lot of stuff on the floor, but I have my mezzanine now is packed with stuff. If like it was like Jenga yesterday, I'm a little bit frightened of that mezzanine. Have you ever tried to get, <laughs> say, you were trying to lift a fucking a oh god, basic? I'm trying to think some a a, a a huge amount of wood yeah. above my head onto a mezzanine that's as high as this, 
I did it all myself. On that is one ladder. of the most dangerous things you could rickety do. Rickety ladder. And I got a bit dizzy at one point and almost fell backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I righted myself. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I was fine. You know what? Mm-hmm. I can tell you now, because I wouldn't tell anyone. When I was building this mezzanine. Uh-huh. You fell off. I had the ladder. Did you toss yourself I was a, I was very tired. It was the end of the night. And yeah. I thought, right, I'll just put something up. And I put the ladder up, but I put it up vertical. And oh. I went to the top. And it came oh, off the God. off the mezzanine about four inches, and I stood there going, <gasps> and it just gently fell back again. There was nothing I could do. Fucking I was so you're dead, man. Yeah, I when I when I was working in the supermarket when I was a kid, I was through in the back, and I used to have this really tall ladder to get up to stuff, mm-hmm. and I used to go up onto the ladder and hop it <laughs> from one side to the other. You, you and do I'm stupid sc- shit you like do that. stupid thing when you're like fourteen. God Almighty, there was another thing I did here. Uh-huh. You see the panels? You nailed your scrotum to the wood? No, I've no. seen that video though. Ah. Uh-huh. And uh, the guy who Brookside used to do that, wasn't it? What? There was an No, it was the guy that had uh, cystic fibrosis. He died. No, he had the uh, There was a group there was like a wood a, a nail your scrotum to the wood group down in England. A group? A group and they were nailing each other's scrotums to wooden fucking breadboards. Chopping blocks. And photographing it But the reason they got caught Was they were putting it into boots To get developed and This some, is why I don't leave the house And some did f- and, But the police went round Because they were saying Are you allowed legally To nail your Or someone else's scrotum To a piece of wood Even if it's consensual I don't This is an 80s thing Yeah Now I, I don't think you would be Because they would get you under some well, do you know health and safety. We've with this before. The guy that health and a, safety the, gone mad. The guy that had to bet you. That's why you and McGregor hates health and safety. Because he can't for nailing <laughs> his scrum. No, a guy went at a chip shop had an argument about a black pudding. Yeah. Says I'm going to come back here with my balls, and he went away, cut his bollocks off, took them back in a bag, and asked them to deep fry him. Is that the same when you're that fourteen happened. and you get, or you're about sixteen, you get mad and you punch the wall? Is that the same, but it doesn't leave? So as you get older, it gets more extreme. I never used to punch a wall when I fell out with mum and dad. I used to go up and battle the pillow. Did you ever battle the fucking... fucking. Um, no, I used to have this. I would grind my teeth. I can see oh, 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 you. I would do that, and I would do it so much. I'd end up with like, uh, just like a headache and a headlock. pain. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, it was yeah. really... I'd get so angry, but I haven't mm. done that for a long time. Apparently, when I'm still annoyed, I'll... I mean, I'll I'll move my I'll grind it side to side, but I don't get the pain or anything. Because I'm I, I'm a pillow pillow puncher, but you're a pillow biter. Yes. Okay. No way. <laughs> Today's show because the series Oz. That's like your life story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and welcome to our new patrons, which would also there's mean a new, there's, there's a new, new ones. One, which would also mean, um, that's a segue. And you oh. jumped in, but this is okay. I'll let it go. I'll uh-huh. let it go. Um, yeah, come and join us on Patreon where you can see the full video versions of these shows. Uh huh. Right? And you can see lots it's of things cheaper happening. than an old school bottle of tomato ketchup. Right. Okay. Now, you know how we've discussed this uh-huh. that when we need to sell the show, we uh-huh. need to sell it. You don't Mate, tell the truth. People really like tomato ketchup. Someone survived if, on it. If. How many bottles of tomato ketchup are sold in the UK in one day? Oh, uh, my well, house, I get like two a week. Well, if you had those numbers. You know my we, one you vice? You wish you were tomato ketchup. I don't have a vice at all. I don't do anything. Uh, uh-huh. I don't smoke, don't drink anything. But if there's fucking sauce. Oh, I love uh, You when like I, brown sauce? You like daddy's sauce. Brown so, daddy's sauce is a bit vinegar oh, down. He, no. um, the greatest sauce ever, the one I'm going on at the moment, is garlic and chili sauce. Nice. Tesco's only. Because garlic's mm. dangerous. Mm-hmm. Chili's dangerous. Good. Combine them. Good. So that's the same as cocaine, heroin, now I'm having crack. But have you ever been to Edinburgh and they give you salt and sauce? What sauce? Salt and sauce. What sauce? It's sauce? salt, but then they put brown sauce and everything. But it's watered down so it's like vinegar. Salt? Salt and oh, sauce. I don't like salt. It's, it's brown. You don't like salt. I hate salt. Salt's wonderful. I hate salt. Put salt on everything. No, I put it on nothing. There was a guy down in England. England's getting a right workout today, but he was in his shed, X minor. Yeah. And oh, that's too. I'll get to the second story. No, but he was in his house. Okay. And he had the kind of the saxo table salt. Yeah, yeah. And he had these fucking stew or that and mashed tatties, and he was just liberally sprinkling mm. salt on it. 
and the top came off and the whole thing of salt went to his food. And okay. he's, he's, his daughter's like that aghast. You have to throw it out. I might fuck throw it out. Mixed it all in and ate it. Killed him. Killed him. Right. It's just like uh, the guy that thought he, was, he had onions. He was eating daffodil bulbs. Killed him. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of okay. <laughs> You would think these don't <laughs> taste like onions. And stop. I remember, <coughs> I was tiny, and you know how some memories you could be practically a baby, but yeah. they're in your head like oh. it happened a few years yeah, ago. Yeah. It just there's every now. I remember being in the bath, uh-huh. and I looked at the side of me, and there was these little things of soap. But I went, they kind of look like sweeties. They do. Oh, the ones shaped. So I started eating them. Uh huh. Right. And I went, oh, they taste terrible, but they can't because they're sweeties. They're sweet, so you kept going. So I got through four. No, I got through three you of the five. A right good skewer out, eh? Right? Aye. And I remember my mum coming in. I go, ah, and shouting on my dad and everything. And he's laughing. He goes, well, what do I want to do? He's going to spear shit. I'll shit him out. But I remember them saying my that. Mom, I must have been how old? My mum used to take you know? all the small bits of un- almost unusable soap and mash them together. Yes. We used to do that. Not not a healthy thing to do. I did not like it. My but. earliest memory, now I was in the yeah. crib, so I must have been like two, something like that. Oh, God, younger. Younger, yeah. yeah so I'm tiny baby. And my mum had been decorating the, the bedroom while I'm in it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? With the lead paint at the time. Yeah, yeah. Gloss yeah. paint. Yeah, everything was gloss. Fuck it. So I must have been spinning. <laughs> but I reached out of the crib, Yeah. got the paintbrush, and it was blue paint, and I just splashed it all over, over everything. You remember that? And I remember it because my my mum came in and was like, oh, fuck, this is terrible. But kind of found it amusing and went and got my next-door neighbours to show them the disaster. Oh, that's And I remember my old next-door neighbour, Jessie Dick. Holy shit. And her and her son came in and peaked. I can remember it. I have a memory. Uh Uh-huh. And it's as, I don't know why, Mm -hmm. like like you're saying. Uh-huh. It's as close as last week. Right, okay. And I remember, and the funny thing is, do you remember being a kid and thinking like an adult? You think adult thoughts, yeah, but yeah. they're trapped in your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So You've I not remember unlocked them yet. Walking down to my auntie's house uh-huh. and crossing the road in Charleston. Not nothing exciting, but I was holding my mum's hand, oh. and in my other hand, I had an airplane wing of a plastic. This is what I carried around. Oh God! And I mentioned it to mum. She goes, "You weren't even two. And I remember it like yeah, it's weird, isn't it's it? It's just some memories. Some things stay. stick. Some things. Speaking stick. of which, uh-huh. this is a brilliant segue. Uh huh. You know, the other day you shouted and gave me a fright, and it just added to and my you, and trauma. You shout, you shout yourself. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the eighth time that you've shouted, and I've got a fright. Eighth. I write How them do you, down. You do. Okay. Right, because ah! now you know what I did get a fright because I could feel that building. Building. Predictable fuck. I'm gonna just drop them. I'm gonna be like. Uh, in the the black uh, the the pink I almost said Black Panther Pink Panther films yeah where Kato jumps out I please don't do That's that what do for please now. don't do that when my girlfriend expect, does it when you least expect it my girlfriend does it weekly right, her plan for hiding is I unbelievable. found a box of party poppers five hundred of them in my studio you'll kill me okay okay well before we, we start with this week's uh can i congratulate you on a hundred thousand downloads Hundred thousand downloads and we're on a hundred thousand people are starting speaking to me they never spoke to me see Weird. they think you've got money now nah, they do. you they don't think got cash we don't we, we don't. don't we don't have a penny but if you join us on patreon you'll, you'll help you'll help support the show and Ken, get i've a, got trees as we holes in them exactly a bigger studio I'd be late. you've been cleaning you're not getting paid to clean your own studio and you've been moaning I've about moaning, it moaning about it yeah okay Today's show uh-huh. is fear. Okay, fear. And I wanted to express my fears mm-hmm. to get them out in the open. And I thought, because I've never really spoke about them in detail, if I say them, will it get rid of them? No. It's not oh. how it works. Will it make it worse? I worked with a guy on the door and he said to me, I fear nothing. I says, you fear nothing, oh. Andy. Big Andy's name right. was. He says, the only thing I fear is deep water. I says, he near deep water? No. But he feared it. He feared it. He feared it. Just deep water. What about the deep water and the, the, the depth of it? Oh, it's God. Right. Right. My first fear. Salt. Salt I don't like. It tastes like shit. Oh, that's wonderful. You I need hate salt, salt. in your diet. That's maybe what's no, wrong with No, no, that was. Uh, I don't like it that much. I would avoid anything with it, and it, it did affect me It gives point. you flavor. Yeah. Without well, salt, no, I don't like salt. Blood. It tastes terrible. Oh, okay. Okay. That was after my head injury. Uh, my third one. Okay. 
It just after that salt maybe it makes of, me nauseated maybe a really bit of quickly. Rock salt was hammered into your brain. Possibly, just, but okay. no, seriously, if someone like put food God on it in a bit, I'd be salt. like, "Oh, here it comes!" It would just make me throw up. It's okay. horrible. Okay. So, the most terrifying film ever made. Well, here we go. Okay. Now, a film that now I think is amazing, mm-hmm. and the main actor I think is his best role he okay. ever took okay. by miles. But even when I watch it now, and I think it's so great. That child part of me is still terrified. Scared of it. Of it. Okay, yeah. okay. Magic. The Anthony Hopkins. Puppet. Oh my god. Oh, for fuck's sake. That is the scare. I used to walk down through Lockheed to go to swimming. Mm-hmm. Well, on the way back, it was darker. Uh-huh. And in the window, oh, there was a videotape, and it was face was on the front. It's I the couldn't puppet, even the look. The puppet it. looked a little bit like. It uh, looks exactly yeah, like it's, him. It's a nice and puppet. And it's te- no, it's not. It's terrifying. It's a well-made puppet. See if you bought something like that. I'd just burn you out of the place. I couldn't have it. No, I couldn't have it. It's it's, on eBay do you right not now. think it's terrifying? No. I'm not scared of puppet. It's oh, like I hate them. Things that now don't, we don't. I things like them. Like my mother, <laughs> hey, the lassies, she was her hairdresser, and the lassies she worked for her, they bought her like a porcelain doll one year. Now, mm-hmm. she's not a fan of porcelain dolls, yeah. but politeness, she's like, oh, that's lovely. So they bought mm-hmm. her another one and another one. Oh, and course. she ended up with dozens of the things. But they lived in a house with the attic. I had an attic room stayed in. And here at the turn of the stairs, that's where all the dolls lived. They need mm. to come round and here they are looking at you. Oh my God. Need a little tiny little shark. I just smashed them all with a I, I wasn't as scared of them. I just don't like the look of them. It's like people find clowns scary. No, no I've either. never found anything no. else. A, a, it's scary. Like people don't like the like word that. moist. What? Moist. They like, don't, they, oh, don't say it. Moist. And they go, oh, yeah, but. <laughs> don't be so ridiculous. Who are you hanging about with? No, it's a it's a fact. People Is this Kate Ross? People don't. No, he's fine with it, but he likes moist things. That's oh half God, his problem. that's his issue. That's How's his the dog issue. doing? Is it oh the new silver? the new dog? Is it Walter? Lovely? Walter. Because the other one died. Warlock. Yeah. yeah well, I insist on. <laughs> it's just not. He won't. Walter. He wouldn't have changed the name. I says the dog doesn't know any fucking better. Walter. But who's got a dog called Walter? Cape Ross. <laughs> Fucking beagles. They're just untrainable. They're idiot dogs. They, they are. But they're lovely. They're, no, they're not. They're, they're just they're idiot dogs. They're just, they're just fucking idiot dogs. So, this film, uh-huh. right, there's one scene in it. Uh-huh. And it's coming sort to the climax because right. the doll's and not alive. The doll's not alive. He he's believes mad. it's yeah, like yeah, He's yeah. schizophrenic. Yeah, yeah. And the the... The doll character, uh-huh. the character goes into the doll, he puts into it, uh-huh. is the killer bad one. And he's a meek wee guy. Uh-huh. Right? And it's great. Okay. He, especially at the start of it where he's on stage and he's a comedian. Right. And everyone's, he's bombing, everyone's shouting at him. Uh-huh. And you hear one guy shouting abuse from the back. Mm. And he goes, sir, I'm not having this. So he walks out and comes back with the dummy. And the dummy's shouting. But it, in his head, the dummy is actually shouting abuse at him. Oh, okay. And it's this sort of relationship. Oh, okay. So in the end, he's oh, it's getting all out of control. And it just cuts to the dummy. He's placed at the window watching what's going on. Mm. Fuck that shit. Fuck uh, that shit. It's scary. Well, remember, when we grew up, there was a lot of ventriloquists on the telly. That It's not a thing yeah, you do no, now. Yeah, no, you don't. We just grew up at the end of the pier. And TV was just yeah. like entertainment. Remember that fucker with the bear? Yeah. What was it called? Can't remember. Nuki Bear. Nuki Bear, oh he my God. He was awful. Was terrible. He was a tumorless fucker. I see. Is he still alive? There's, on YouTube, there's a young girl, a young blonde. You, like, she looks fucking teenager if she is, and she's a ventriloquist. Awful. And it's terrible. Shite. She's, she's, she can do it, Keith but it's Harris. terrible. It's been, who wants to? Keith Harris and Orville. The fucking monkey thing oh as well. Oh my god, Keith Harris and Orville. Bob Carroll, Jesus spit the dog. He's a hey. former police officer. I did. He, he has the moustache. Oh, he does. Is he still alive? I don't know. He built a career out of that. Just What's Spit going to do if he's dead? Just shit. Uh, did you watch a documentary on fucking, what's his name? Rod Hull? No. He robbed that fucking emu. It wasn't his idea. What? He's across in Australia uh-huh. and he got onto his TV show. Somebody came up with the emu for him and he fucking left the country with it. Fled. Most people flee to Australia for criminality. He came he the came, other way. God, that's unusual. And I think somebody tried to sue him and all this stuff. And his ego got so... He took himself so seriously and he built a giant mansion. He and bought this huge stately home. No, he built a huge... He bought this huge stately home like a money pit. Right, okay. And then the recession hit and he was wiped out. Oh, right. And so then he moved to a bungalow. his career... <laughs> I don't think he really got into the like student market going around. Yeah. And then he ended up in a tiny, it was a National Trust leaky old 
the bungalow place he was in. And he it, fell off the roof. I of don't know what year it was, uh-huh. but you can work it out because he was trying to. His aerial wasn't very good, and he was watching yeah, the World, World Cup. Cup. We showed up at a comedy award without the emu. If he took the emu off, he could have held on. Yeah, we, he showed up at a comedy award without the emu, and they're like, "I don't know what to see you, emu." That would drive you mad. And wasn't it the story? He was at some party, very handsy, and there was a mighty young queef as a a gangster. It was a gangster's party or something. The kids, right, right. and he was getting out of hand, and the gangster went up and says, "If you don't get that fucking emu under control." Kind of like that. No, the, Billy Connolly had said, again, he was on part and said, and he went to attack Billy Connolly, and Billy Connolly says, if that comes near me, I'll break its neck and your arm. Oh, that's a good one as well. But it's it's funny how people focused on the... Yeah. Yeah. But he could get away with anything because he just grabbed folks' tits. He, no. It's not me, it's he. Yeah, there was a lot of that going on. He'd go straight well, for Well, imagine the... if he just disguised your penis as like a slow worm and just said, it's not me that's doing it, it's a slow worm. It's not me doing it. It's, it's slow, you. It's no, slow. this is how I'm going to get out of shit. <laughs> it's not me doing it. It's going on. Uh, you have to have new techniques now. Can the world's got like safer? So you have to be. Yes. Yes. No. Standard, no. We stand, should, you shouldn't really say that. Your out standard loud. pervert. No, no, I'm not saying for us. All right. I'm okay. saying for your workaday pervert. It's They've because, got to put effort it's, in. It's, back in the day, it wasn't a difficult. You just flash. We your were just penis. looking at pictures from Mid Journey f- version five, uh, and it's amazing. How's a pervert supposed to keep up with that? Well, Perverts I wa- are going to be out of a job. I watched like the never-ending story the other day. And can the, pr- the princess Why? of fantasy? It's terrible. Some of the puppets in that are brilliant. German, they, isn't it? German. German. Anglo-German. Yeah. That's weird because there's boobs in it and stuff. You don't expect it's, it's a sphinx with giant tits. Yeah. But the wee lassie who's the princess, she was a child. But such was the attention she got. She had to f- stay out of the public line. Like, like folk were just... Sending her weird shit. Oh my god, no, that's adult what man. F- what the fuck? Living in a weird time. Right. Okay, my next one. Okay, <clears throat> now this fear, uh huh, I've got to explain. If I have a lady staying with me or, or something like that, uh huh, right, and they get undressed, this is going to get very personal, and they leave underwear such as a bra or a thong. Are you scared of it? I'm terrified. So much so, right. I can't cross the room and I have something to fix it. Now, this has been with me for 20 years. This is my underwear grabber. Right? Well, you you deal with it like it's nuclear. I pick it up and I close my eyes and I walk it to the bin and I throw it out. It costs me a fortune. I have to buy underwear again to replace it. You don't, what you're supposed to do is I throw it out Put it in a sandwich bag, seal it so keep the odours in (laughs) and sell it. (laughs) No. You take it. Imagine you got a hold of a pair of Susan's knickers. I need two of these. You could you could you could lag a nuclear submarine with it. <laughs> Just lag it. I I can yeah, pick it up. It's corroded at the end. It's, you've been, listen, you've I've been, had this you've been running with some right ladies. Kim. This is this has kept me safe for twenty years. A lot twenty three years. And I pick this up, right, and I close my eyes and I drop it in the bin and I seal the bin up and I'm safe. That's very strange. Right. And as it turns out, some bras can be very I expensive. I know what's happened to you. And I've got a hand over like 50 quid. I know what's happened. What? There's been a home invasion at your house. And this is, this is a memory you've forgotten, you've suppressed. You've hidden in the washing up box. And right. you've been partially suffocated by your mother's like knickers and stuff. And this has given you the now, fear. I... I know what caused it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you. And I've oh. said it before, and it traumatised me all day after saying it because I don't like saying it out loud. When I was a kid, <clears throat> I would leave the house, uh-huh. right? I was that young with my mum. We'd go to the shops or something, Jesus, dee-pee, dee-pee, dee-pee. Uh-huh. and I'd look across, uh-huh. right? And there was washing lines, oh, yeah. and there was a lady that lived next door to us, and she had her flesh-coloured nylon underwear which wasn't washed properly and had skiddies on it. And I couldn't look at it. Oh, it made me want She'd to put it out in the line. On the line. Oh, dirty And I couldn't bitch. look. Bit of bleach in there. And you know sucked. what happens? Mm. This. I end up with a grabber. This is a pant grabber. And I pick it. Now, see underwear on a lady. Well, hello. But as, as soon as it comes dis- off, it's, if it's discarded, if she, if she sloughed, it's in the bin. If she sloughed it off like a snake yeah. skin. My uh, uh, girlfriend learned a long time ago. The, the underwear she she gets it, she hides it so I don't fucking run around the house with say it, terrified. She, say she put a pair of dirty knickers under your pillow and you 
You were like, oh, I'm well, off to sleep. You, you would be reading about yeah. me in the newspaper. And you put your hand under, <laughs> here it is. I don't know what would happen. That would. Okay, that's, that's very strange, mate. Is it? <laughs> it's very, not strange. Everyone feels fun. the same. No, no. Okay. Oh, that's my grabber. Uh, this is kept, it's a bit loose in that, but it's kept me going for many years. Look at that. Okay. It's actually 23 years, 23 years old. And if there's any emergency, I just go, okay. and I throw it out. Very strange. If okay. someone's washing gets in my mind, uh, my partner's washing gets strange, in my mind, I'll person. throw my clothes out well, as well. Can you go into like an Ann Summers? No. I was walking along. <laughs> no. Reform, I was walking along. <laughs> I was walking along Reform Street the other day because <laughs> I do my charity shop run. Mm -hmm. And I wandered into the charity shop and I was in the door. I looked up. It was Ann Summers I'd walked into by mistake. Oh, I was like, God. oh fuck, I'm no, me I'm no meant to be here As gay guys But like, let's have a look mm -hmm. at the dildo <laughs> <laughs> While I'm here Do you double ender? No, I can't, I can't Right, I was in, I can't remember what shop it was And it was with my uh -huh. girlfriend And she she took a left turn and went uh -huh. into the underwear And this is not, I was wearing my rucksack uh -huh. And a bra had hooked onto oh, it Oh my god Accidentally. I froze I froze. It's like Indiana Jones with the spiders. Worse. Well, That's more well, dangerous. I fucking... Oh, fuck. And she's laughing, right? And just standing looking at me laughing. But she had to get it and I just took off outside. If she goes looking for undercrackers, anything like that, I'm outside. Oh, Jesus. Because you're not allowed to take this in no, and pick stuff not. up. I have a memory of my mother as a hairdresser, but she was washing <laughs> old ladies' wigs. And oh. I looked at the washing machine that's just going round. Oh. Weird. That's... I don't know how that would possibly happen, but there was years ago. There was a guy. It was during. It was not long. So you're talking twenty three years ago. It was just after nine eleven, and the the building was empty, right. and the police were elsewhere because it was. Remember, there was a golf. Yeah. A, a, the first golf competition after nine eleven. The security. The, remember the buses had cameras, and there was all kinds. Yes, of Yes, yes, yes. Remember. And the the um. I come downstairs and there's this wee fat dude standing in the main foyer in like mismatched bra, bra and pants. His mother had died the day oh, before, so yeah, he, he had yeah, a job yeah. in a charity shop. He went in, just went a break into down. the pile, put his yeah. knickers on. So I put him in a wee office. We had to phone the police, obviously. Yeah. We sat him down. Shame. He said, "Is this is this where I get hiding?" And he his eyes like lit up, and we said, "No." Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I was feeling sorry trying, for him, but he, he just needed it. Yeah, he was trying to snare yeah. us, and he's little, yeah, he's little tacky. But tacky if anyone way. feels the same as me, yeah, okay. you can get these for like a fiver. <clears throat> I think that I think I was like three pound for this all that time ago, and it's oh, lasted I've got, me. I've got about five of them. In the it's wonderful, and mm. it's if no underwear has attacked me in the time I've had this. I've got a ball shaped one for picking up shits. Really? Can you put the bag over it? Pick up the tub. Oh, that's clever. It's I've Andy, not seen yeah, that. I've not seen that. Mm, I just use my, my deer leg. So that's my fear. Oh, there's Flossie here or barking. Mm. Right, okay. Next one. Now, it's a weird fear because it'll never affect oh, me. Oh, it's weirder than other fears, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Sick. I don't think it's weird. Very weird. Horses. You're scared of horses? I No, I like horses. Uh -huh. The penises. But it's the thought of getting on one. Never been on a horse. Would I fuck? Oh, brilliant, man. Get to fuck. Oh, brilliant. It'll kill you. Feel that big animal between your exactly. legs. Exactly. No. No. Absolutely not. I, I've been horse riding maybe twice. I enjoyed it. Okay. The problem I had was my head is so large. I always, the helmet I have to wear is tight in my head. I don't like it. <laughs> but the other thing, so I'm going in this horse, having a great time. And it keeps stopping and I'm thinking, can you know, I'm taking a shit. Yeah. They don't shit on the move, they stop. Well, I, I shit my flatmate used to have a horse. I like to do a Paula Radcliffe, just... Oh, and just right on it. Oh, do you not like horses? And I'd go across, uh, yeah. and I would, oh, God, it would come up to you. You got to know me, and you get a hug oh, off yeah, it. They nice were answer. lovely. The smell of them is quite nice. It, li it, it liked me so much, petting it, right? Check this. It would fall asleep when it saw me. Are you a Catherine? So I couldn't go down to the stables before it had been riding. But when it came out and was getting all brushed and everything and groomed and that, I could talk to it. It would just fall asleep as you were talking Told you to it. It was a lovely. Cub, a cub, lovely. A cub scout. But I won't get on one. There was a Shetland pony that was putting its cock in the electric fence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Enormous cock. That's uh, poking through and whacking the fence me, whacking me in the leg. Why did you let it do that? Well, I was patting his head, and while it was I'm sure you were. <laughs> <laughs> I was 
It was like a kind of it's a bit of it's wild. You get them a ho- horse drag cock, the grass at that horse, height, horse cock like dildos. Oh, I don't Awful. know what's wrong with people. There was a there was a Shetland pony down in England that got tupped by a a Clydesdale. Oh, but the Clydesdale was quite a young stallion, mm-hmm. and the 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 Shetland pony had been around a bit, so she was uphill. Mm-hmm. So she'd stood in a slope so the Clydesdale could fuck I her. was cycling down it's to Moneyfeath uh-huh. like fuck 1990. Uh-huh. Long time ago. Right. And I stopped my bike to watch, watch this. horses fuck No, no, no. It was a German Shepherd getting fucked by a Jack Russell. Of course. But the the the, the, the German Shepherd was very accommodating oh, yeah, and laid yeah. right down this wee thing's yeah, going to town on it. it. Giving it lalde. It was amazing. Yeah, but find the love finds a way. Life. Finds a way. Life. So uh, don't get me wrong. I really like horses, Do I but ride I wouldn't. One? No, I would not. That scares me. Oh fuck! Okay. The idea that's that your, that's your Christmas present. That's, that that scares year. me. Okay, next uh-huh. one. Windy weather, but only at night. You don't like the wind. I hate at it. Night. Don't like it. It bothers me. And that was since uh, in a stormy night. Mm-hmm. I had this tree outside the window. Oh. The tree came in. But when it went out, it sort of popped in and pulled out the window and the frame. The whole window went. Pulled, pulled off your little panties. Pulled then. off my pants and then I had to pick them up with my <laughs> panty picker upper. And Oi, do your own pants repulse you? Everything. Okay, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Don't like anything. Any, any psychiatrists listen to this? <laughs> it's not. There's nothing There's a paper getting it. written. In no, 300 it's episodes. That's, it's a <laughs> that's a PhD. <laughs> There's a Raymond Bradbury short story, The Wind. And the wind's like a demonic kind of force. Yes. And intelligence. He knows. And it's trying to get into the house. Uh huh. It's good. It's a good And book. the thing was, I know the moment that the switch went in my head. Okay. When the tree came through, uh-huh. it was in the dark. I couldn't tell what it was. And from the moment it went in and out that quickly and pulled the whole frame, everything, the the stone, everything just went falling out. And I'm in a bay window and suddenly you're just, there's nothing. There was a moment where I had no concept what had just happened. It sucked off. I had no, okay. no clue. And that <coughs> moment, I imagine it was, I would leave fuck. It. So every time it's windy, it's like a muscle memory. You're like, oh. but during the day, you don't think about it. Well, but when it gets dark, I don't well, like him it. Well, him out of Bullseye, Jim Bowen. Yeah. He had a phobia of spoons. <laughs> And they reckon that had come because as an infant he had yeah. choked on a spoon. But you can't get rid N- of it. Knives and forks were fine, but spoons. But psychologically. And stuffed birds as well he was scared of. That's pretty scary. I was in a cub camp many years ago. I'm a pal, Alan. What fears are we away to talk about? This isn't a fear, this isn't a, a oh. wind-based observation. <laughs> memory. So he, he, he was in the middle of the night, he's busting for a pish. Mm-hmm. So he gets out his sleeping bag, but he's in the middle of he's fucking falling over. Everybody. Anyway, he opens the tents all tied an old fashioned mm-hmm. army tent opens up the tent opens the flaps pees out the tent but the wind's blowing right at the tent mm-hmm. just drenches himself so we're all we're looking at him he's torch just dripping wet with his own pish I have a we a made spouse. him sleep near the door oh god it'll, it'll heat up after a while because that was the same tent camp when the they'd left the leaders had left all the weeks so it was a long camp all the week sausages in the tent a local dog well miles from anywhere smelt it came in ate all the sausages and then took a shit in the tent. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> it's it's big, memories. You're building character. That's what you're doing. Shattered. Now, there's someone I won't say their name because no. I don't think they'll listen to this, but I won't say their no. name. They were at the Scouts. Uh-huh. They, were down, they were on a hike. Oh, uh. Muddy, rainy, horrible day. Down for a pee. Go down there. Have a pee. Uh-huh. So all these mates are standing about, and he, the one person told me all we saw was this person that were beside a little burn, a little river, yeah. floating past on his back with his cock. <laughs> he followed him. He just lay there, <laughs> floating with his cock out. <laughs> then I had to run and get him. He just sort of froze. <laughs> he couldn't believe he was in the water and his cock was up in the air. Oh, how undignified. <laughs> Can people get that into was accident? never forgot about. Never. You get into an accident, you're, tr- you're debriefed and you're lying in the middle of the road. At his wedding. Oh, you... At his wedding. Oh. Do you know what was talked about oh. by the best man? <laughs> so that's windy weather. Right, next one. Uh huh. This is going to make sense to you. I will. And I, I think this was. You know how you've got your frontal lobe. The lobes, and uh-huh. It kicks no. in at a certain point. Yeah. Well, I used to like motorbikes. 
uh-huh. right? And I'd ride them about and uh-huh. blah, blah, uh-huh. blah. Never thought about it. Uh-huh. I wasn't a fast rider. I just liked them, uh-huh. right? And then years ago, I was at college and a guy come in with, uh, he got a Suzuki Bandit. And we're admiring it. He goes, uh-huh. go and take a shot, right? Oh, no. He goes, go and take it up around the top part of Perth and come back in. Perth? So you think. I was at college at the right, time. Right, okay. So I get, what are you doing? My, my, my watch strap came off. Just oh carry on. So I get on the bike, and uh-huh. it's a 600, and it's a, a beautiful brand new bike back uh-huh. then. And I go riding, and I go up onto the motorway at the back of Perth. Uh-huh. And I'm going, come on, get a bit faster, a bit faster. And I look down and I'm doing 90. Okay. Now, I don't drive fast anywhere. Uh-huh. And no, I didn't feel it was fast enough. You're dead. Yeah. And as I looked at 90, a switch went in my head. I went, oh, this isn't safe. Oh. And I'd never thought that in my life. Oh. And I slowed right down. I rode it back. And I felt so vulnerable on a motorbike. Yeah. And I rode it back and I've never been on one since. Yeah. I just, my, I, I'm like, no, nah, I'm done. My cousin's ex-husband, I was walking back. I was a young laddie. Mm-hmm. Kind of like, I must have been fucking 16 or something. Walking back from the pub and he appears in his motorbike, big fucking sports bike. Okay. And he's like, I'll take you home. Can I live like, yeah. say a mile away? And I'm thinking, oh, not a good idea. He's a terrible driver. But I thought, I'll get on the back. Well, I'll do it. And he fucking floored it, went oh, past Jesus. my house and took me out in the countryside. That was one of the shittiest things in it. That's a shitty done. thing to do, yeah. I'll put your Holding bikes for, for life. Dear yeah. life. It's Hold a on. shitty thing. Uh-huh. No, I was, I've never had a problem. Uh, and when I drive, I drive like a granny. I hate yeah, yeah. breaking the speed limit. Well, you never your have... car smells like a granny's car. That, I only had diarrhea in it once and I cleaned well, it's, it out. It's a sweeter smell now, like I, lavendery. Lavender. It. Yeah, yeah. Lavender. Harm of violets and that. But I, I don't. Do anything like Aye. that. I don't speed. I ride my bicycle everywhere. I'm fine. But in that moment, uh-huh. I went from not th- total confidence on a bike, mm-hmm. just going nope. It's nope. Your, it's it just you dis- went. You discover your mortality. I think that's I what was it a was. little more gung ho, but then I got hit by a car, mm-hmm. and then I fell out of a tree, and then a few breaks. You're like that. Oh, hold on a minute. You become more cautious. I was 29. Yeah, and it just, I just went. No, I'm not yeah. going on a bike I've again. I've broken a bone in years. In my 20s, I broke bones all every six months. I'd yeah. broken something. I was breaking bones. Breaking something. Because you're pushing it. You're I, pushing your limits. I broke that ankle like six or seven times. That's not good. It's not, is it? I went to hospital one time because I thought, I fucking broke my ankle. And the doctor, the, 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 the x-ray, did, says, no, you, you've not broken it on this occasion. Uh, it's very, very badly sprained. But we can see by the x-ray, it looks like you broke it about six months ago. And I'm like, oh, yeah, so, so yeah. I did. Yeah, yeah, that I've I've done at our that. age now. Shatter, but a bad shatter. sprain will put oh, you out for a year. You don't yeah. realize you don't <laughs> re- bad things that annoy you. You don't realize how much you walk until you've broken your mm-hmm. ankle. It's awful. It's just you awful. don't realize how much you bang something yeah. into anything until you get it pierced. Yeah, okay. If you get a pierced nipple, you don't realize that oh. you open doors with your tit. That's um, you do. Yeah, it's like yeah. everything hurts all yeah, the time. Okay. So motorbikes, I just. I think that was okay. Just it was in that moment I went, oh, this is for me. Motorbikes kill a lot of people. Very dangerous. It is dangerous. It is dangerous compared to other things. Yeah, of course it's dangerous. Car smash. That's very increasingly survivable car crashes. When I see anyone, cars now, you see them. They're big marshmallow. If I see anyone on a motorbike or anything like that, I'll always move for them. And I've been in a car with someone, and I moved over because there was a bike flying up the middle, and they're like, oh, he's a fucking dick. You shouldn't move. I went. He may be a dick, but he doesn't deserve to, to die, die for it. Yeah. Well, I came just off, move. I came off my bike last year, and it wasn't really fast. Oh yeah, I broke my ribs. Yeah, ba- badly. It's it doesn't. So take imagine much. coming off a bike at fucking ninety you, mile an hour. You, you, are, you are dead. You're dead. You? you don't. You're last, dead. Yeah. Just breaking your neck. That's a horror. Oh, Ugh, horrible, horrible, horrible. Ugh. Okay. Uh huh. Now this is the no no. Okay, this I, is I my had last my, fear. I told you I had my fear of sitting in a toilet for years. Because I watched the film Goonies. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was in the toilet. <laughs> and then I just, for whatever reason, thought, this could be someone's going to grab uh, me. It's a completely irrational fear. So I used to just hover a little bit. It's not really irrational because you can get a rat coming up there. Yeah. Snake. Well, no, I'd, we lived up. Yeah, no, I don't think a rat would have come up that particular toilet we used. But yeah, but it, that went away when I went to uni because I thought, look, I'm going to have to bite the bullet here. That I'm might just be gonna fun. have to sit in the toilet. So at, at 18, 19, you went, you know what? I'm just going to sit on a toilet. Two things I, at 18, <laughs> I started sitting on the toilet properly and had my first paid haircut. 
It was a big time for me, the 18th. No, I don't mind. I had some so firsts. That was, you moved away from home and yeah. it was all Still no learn to, Still no learn to drive. I never will. Why? It's going to be fucked. But what if we're going to like a personal appearance and that and I'll I've got to do the driving? Yeah, that's fine. Ugh. That's the way it works. Uh, how I look at it is, and people have applauded me for this and part of yeah. me, but I see I'm never in the car myself. So I'm, I'm, my carbon footprint is negligible. Oh, well, negligible. it's easy for you to say. <laughs> negligible. <laughs> My final fear Uh huh Fear itself This is a good fear Failure Oh no I'm well used to that Okay That's that's my baseline Baseline So Here's what it is Uh huh Uh 2000 The year 2000 Uh huh I got a job 23 years ago Along Everyone's 23 years Half, ago today Yeah uh, No 2000 Oh no it was 2000 2000 Okay And A it simpler was a taxi, time simpler. A taxi firm and I went down and uh-huh. I was assistant fleet manager. Or so I don't know what it oh, was. I cleaned bit, cars. Okay. Right, I cleaned cars. That's all it was. So <clears throat> I was in there and I was given a little desk. Okay. Right. And a cupboard. Of, and in the after open. about, it was basically a cupboard. Right. After about three days, I was. Did you have a sh- chamois paperwork. leather and shit leather? Oh, I had it all. Oh, that. wonderful. I had three chamois leathers. Okay. Proper chamois, not yeah, the Yeah, proper. Mm. So I. Uh, I was leaning at the desk in a chair like this. Uh-huh. And to keep my balance, I put my knees under the desk like that. Uh-huh. Right, and I was just leaning, having a cup of tea, talking to the boss, and I'm just having a blather. So I went, right, better get back to work, and I pulled my knees down. Uh-huh. And both had a, a sheen of, like, a plasticky substance on them. Uh-huh. I went, what's that? It was years and years of snot dried in that my legs had rubbed off un- under the desk. It made me dizzy. Fuck. I went and got my gloves on, cleaned my trousers, oh. soaked them, cleaned them. Oh, I was right. It's so bad now, this fear. Of bogeys. Of bogeys. I wait, when my, I get, I, you better not, I would stab you to death. I'm just thinking of your shutter. Just where your fingers reach when you're pulling down the shutter. Don't put that in my head. I'm going to get white bogeys Don't put there. it, I would kill you. I would fucking kill you just imagine you just reach out the podcast would be over because i'd be just, no, i wouldn't what? even go to your funeral this is a moist tissue <coughs> well you done it the other week and you put a lollipop on it and and it worked because i took my hand down it was stuck to my finger and i had <laughs> can't i was so mad even if a desk i was giggling when i was walking away with i that. got a desk right uh-huh. Uh-huh. and i got it from i can't remember where and uh-huh. i arrived at the house mm-hmm. took it out you know when it smells good? yeah i put it together mm. you know what i done i uh-huh. went and got Disinfectant and cleaned the underside. Oh, somebody in the workshop. But yeah. when it was out flat, it didn't bother me. Uh-huh. But as soon as it went flat, the underneath was now dangerous. Oh, dangerous. So I cleaned it and cleaned it and cleaned it. And I'd do it all. Oh. I used to work with a guy, Peter. He mm-hmm. doesn't listen to this. I'm not okay. saying his last name. No, no. He used no. to <laughs> eat yogurt so his bare fingers, with his fingers, not what with a spoon. Fuck. So he's like. <laughs> And then when he was finished, he'd suck his fingers and then he'd wipe Under between the... his leg on the chair. On the chair, the crotch area of the chair. And at the work, they had fabric chairs. And the bit of oh, his crotch him. become like penicillin It was green, different yeah. hues. <laughs> they had to ch- chuck the stuff out. And I sat there one day watching him in the tea room while he's doing this. And I says, what the fuck are you doing, you dirty bastard? Stop doing that. He says, oh. are you a mink? I says, what? you're calling me a mink? You, have you never had a fucking spoon? He says, ah, you waste your yogurt. But he's a cunt. What he used to do was he'd come into the tea room <laughs> and he'd take his socks off and put them in the radiator and sit on his bare feet and eat his yogurt with his fingers. And he got caught one time. I Somebody can't. came in and the tea towel for drying the stuff, he was wiping his face with it, his mouth. He's getting the corners of his mouth, the food out. I can't. And Yeah. Now, I'm not overly clean. I'm... But Jesus. I walked into the cupboard. Oh. <laughs> into the cupboard. And he was fucking pissing <laughs> into the sink. And I said, what are you doing, you dirty bastard? Go to the toilet. And he was just peeing. But he, he was peeing his... He was, he was doing it secretly. So mm-hmm. he was nipping his little penis and like to hide it while he was peeing in case somebody came in. And a lassie that worked there... This is the wildest one. A lassie worked there. She'd the been fuck? there. She'd, she'd been... The the job had been getting her down. She she went into the cleaning cupboard and at the back of the cleaning cupboard, she sat in one of those elephant feet thing and the little step. Oh yeah 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 yeah. She just sat there like that. The door opens mm-hmm. and he walks in, but he doesn't spot her. 
comes in, twists round, trousers down, grabs his cock, masturbates, like, but not real masturbation, like a kind of, ah, fuck you, salutes, and then leaves. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to do that now. I salute. want to salute. And she sat there. In shock. In shock watching this. <laughs> Another thing he did. Oh, my God. He's, he's, one of his testicles inflated with liquid. Mm -hmm. Spillage. Some excess. Excess something. Mucus. Who cares? He got it tapped and removed like a fucking rubber tree. Okay. So his cocks had an operation on it. His balls. So there's a stitches. It's all bound up. Because the way upstairs... He's been watched on camera. The place is open to the public. Okay. Unravels the bandage, examines his cock, picks off something. The bandage is put over the back of a chair. What? Wraps himself back up, comes downstairs, speaks to everybody, and then he's away. Everybody's been watching him on the camera. This is why it's I'm wild. scared of tables. Yeah. But you... Oh my god. The thing god. is, mate, if you I can't get that shit hygiene, in my head. But hygiene stuff like that, you just can't you've got to cast that aside. You would never eat any food. I worked in a shortbread. I factory. understand, but people used to fucking lick shortbread and put it on the conveyor belt. A guy I know used to work at Kellogg and this is true, he's a reliable source. Worked at Kellogg's, big Kellogg's factory in England. Right. A guy used to put little balls of fucking these shite dangle berries in the cocoa pops. I don't want to leave the house. You know what I mean? I don't want to eat Folk again. Folk are dirty bastards. I get that. I was in um, Home Bargains. Oh, God. The Home Bargains up at Loch Eee. Right. Vast. Vast. So I was in there. Uh-huh. And I had forks and knives. Yes. Yeah. And this well-dressed uh -huh. middle-aged woman with her friend oh. opened the, the box, uh -huh. took them out, put them in their mouth to try them, and went, nah, and put them back and put it in it. Now, you think you'd buy a box of forks and knives that have not been touched. They've been in try, someone's try, mouth. Try them out. There was a guy, I've told you this, there was the guy I'd see him all the time up in Tesco's, and he'd pick his nose and wipe it on the neeps and the tatties. I can't buy, here's another fear, I cannot buy anything loose, because I saw him wipe his nose. This went on for about three years, about ten years ago. And would see him and would you my girlfriend would there he is. Bastard. Said it I'd said it to him four or five times. And what was he what did he say? Nothing. There was nothing going on. I'd have kicked him the cunt for that. Oh I I told people. I told them they went, Oh well we didn't I see went, anything. I went to the Liddles, kind of Liddles up in Lockheed. Yep. And it used to be kind of the fucking scrapyard next to it, the bins. Yeah, yeah. He's built a wall, I noticed. I saw that cage. Yeah. The place was rotten with smells coming off of there. The Liddles must have been going mental about right, it. Right, right. Walk into the Liddles, go up to the bakery section. Yeah. The Liddles might sue me for this, but it's true. The iced donuts. Mm hmm I thought, is that hundreds and thousands? It was fucking blue balls. Oh, right, yeah. Covered, eating the sugar off, right? And I went to the manager guy and I says, you can't sell those donuts. They are absolutely hoaching. And it was blue balls coming from the dump next door. Oh, God. He's like, oh well. He oh, didn't well. fucking take them off. I stop. saw a wee kid in there. Oh god, just oh three. Aye. And they were just licking things oh, and putting them in. It's like the wee, You can't buy anything it's loose. It's like the wee kids anything. in B and Q. Can they set up the wee Yeah. The rooms. Yeah. The showrooms. Folk always shit in the toilets. Yeah. That's they're all the glued shut in. The glued yeah. shut. People open them and just shit just in shit them. In them. No water in them. Just oh, take my a shit in god. them. Oh my god. It's no Anything I was I told loose. you I was in Glasgow and I was leaning against a bin having a fag. I felt something about my legs. And this wee kid's peeing in the bin, but he's peeing straight through the bin and on down my legs. I was like soaked with kid pish. Oh my god. Oh, another Jimmy fear. Used to Do you want another that? fear? Yeah. Peeing at a urinal. Oh. Right? There's been several things happened. Okay. But the last one It's a very uncivilized way we, to urinate. Yeah, I agree. But we were uh, uh, we're selling aprons at some place right. up in uh -huh. I can't remember, Aye, not drum far the, from drum the door off some place. Okay. And it was like this little country fair thing. And they'd set up a toilet and essentially it was you're stood at a hay bale and pissed into another hay bale. Oh. Right. And it was a little sort of shed thing. Oh fucking. So hell. I go in and peeing this way. What did I do with the bales of hay? I know. Probably goes down to side, apple cider presses. I would imagine. Give it a right tang, <laughs> wouldn't it? Scrumpy Jack. <laughs> So I'm cloudy. I'm, it was cloudy side. I don't want to pee in public because of other reasons. Yeah. And I'm peeing. Right? Oh. oh, thank God, I need this pee. This kid comes in beside me. Uh, ten. Oh, 
he starts peeing this really powerful jet. Aye. But he's trying to catch it in his mouth. Oh. And I'm like trying to turn away, going, oh, fuck, it's going everywhere. And he's like, ah, ah, ah. And, it's, and I'm like, fuck. So I stopped peeing because I, I did, instantly did he, did stopped. Did he say, did you want some? I start like panicking. Like a seltzer thing. Well, what did you say to people? I was in there with a kid and he was drinking his piss. Uh, what did you say? I so I go into full fucking panic mode, right? So I go back, right, to where we're selling the stuff, get my keys, go in the car, drive up the road, and there's a tree, and I run behind the tree and piss and drive back down again. I'm bursting, there but used, I couldn't go. There used to be, across from the rep, there's a the social. Mm -hmm. but That's a nightclub, but it had one toilet. Mm -hmm. So it was a nightclub The gents toilet had a urinal And a fucking kludgy That was it Right Tiny little toilet Okay Like the size of the space We sinks and that So oh. like You'd be It would be full of people Waiting to piss Right And like everybody's Got a bit gun shit Well yeah of course can it's, it's horrible Weird Yeah And folks in the shit Nobody's taking a shit Folk are just a, But to make things worse Did an African guy With lollipops <laughs> Giving you like like a, sp a spray of fucking aftershave and looking for money. That sounds classy now. You made it sound bad, but, but I think it's quite classy. Imagine that for a job. What the, f the fuck? Oh. The last thing this needs is another person with like a fucking setup with su a chubba chub sweeties <laughs> in this murky, pishy environment. When this happened to me, I was so panicked. I ran oh, out in Susan's man in the stall. Oh. And I tell her what's happened and she looks at me That's like so it's a story. A weird kid. And behind me, this kid comes walking out like he's been dunked in the sea. He was soaked. So, walking imagine, along. Imagine if you said, Mummy, that man peed on me. I, this oh! is what I was worried about. Jesus. This is what I... Yeah, he peed on me. I didn't want him to. What did I say? He said he, what, said he wanted me to drink his pee. What the, did I say? What did I do? I had to run like fuck. It's a farming community. They that's have, normal for they them. Have, they would have hanged you off a fucking combine harvester. No, they probably... That's normal. They that's just, what they do. No, they would have just noosed you up. The people from the countryside, they're not right. This was their kid. The worst pisser in Dundee. There's, there's a glory... Pissers, it's a, it's, a, it's a urinal of extreme Dundee. Mm -hmm. It's got menes on the Perth Road, which has... It's, if, if the whole of Dundee was getting destroyed, okay, it's like that Buddha that the the fucking Taliban blew up. Oh right, okay. Some people from London would come up in a special plane to, to remove the urinal. Oh right, okay. It's it's like glorious. It's some. It's gigantic. It's the height of the wall. It's oh. like six feet tall. It's all in fucking beautiful ceramic. It's odorless. Right, Your okay. Your pee disappears into this That's system. Amazing. It's a glory. It's no smell. It's not like the. The urinals here no, that make you sick when no, you pee in them. No, oh, right, okay. the ones in the first floor look like they're tea stained. Have I swear to God, yeah, tea stained. I swear to God, when you pee in it, there's a gas comes out. Someone's pissing creosote. Oh. I, I kid you not. Anyway, that's the best toilet, and it's got little bits so you can rest your arms. Yeah, what? yeah. Have you never been in it? Never heard of this. It's it's a famous Dundee pisser. Keep on you, the mic. Keep on the mic. Yeah, well, you're doing well. So <laughs> that's one thing. Pillars Bar in Dundee, right. the other extreme. Oh, you go into the urinals. There's a urinals which are back to back, and there's a small, a, a small platform in the middle. Okay, about this wide, like less than a foot wide. So you have to go down this little platform to pee. So you're standing pissing. If it's busy, it could be eight guys pissing at it. Oh my god! Back to back. Oh, this is awkward. So when you're standing peeing, you're trying not to. You're giving me more fears. You're trying not to step forward into your own piss. The guy behind you is doing the same. So your button butts, when they shake their cock, you feel it. It's <laughs> fucking awful. It's the worst thing. <laughs> you're but giving you're like, me too many why, fears. Why is there two urinals? Just have one, remove one, and have one length of urinals. They've doubled up. It's extraordinary. I people are outside shaking. They're like, "Oh my god!" Yeah. See, this is you see, you're getting it. This is the fear. Now, here's another one. I was in uh, Arkansas. Uh -huh. I was in Ozarks, and it was oh, the hidden. I can't remember something. It was some is beautiful. That the one you walk. shot into the void. Yeah. Yeah. Into, and uh -huh. it goes to this beautiful cave, and we couldn't go in the cave because you could hear a rattlesnake. It was wonderful. Right. It was really an, a, a wonderful experience walking around. Who designs? But I think this toilet architects don't get involved in toilets. But this so was, they're just made. This was plastic. Right. Okay. But. It went into the ground. Uh huh. But the way the light went in, you could see down. I was dying for a shit, right? I had oh. to go. The smell was horrific because it was hot, hot, uh. right? And I had a shit. And I got up, and you always look down. Yeah. It was moving. 
there was things down there. Jesus. It was moving. And the smell was making me dizzy. Because that's so a food s- source, all that rich shit. I was so scared. I would say I would have shit myself, but I already did. It was very healthy. It was a good when one. When I was in Paris and went to see Jim Morrison and Edith Piaf's grave. That's a cheery Massive, day massive cemetery. Mm-hmm. It's like Rodin grave. It's fucking, it's worth a look. Wonderful. Best cemetery. I, mean, I like cemeteries. This Rodin, one. the thing that fought Godzilla. This, no, there's a sculptor. Rodin. Oh, right. Okay. But he, it's wonderful figures and all this. And Jim Morrison's grave. Jim Morrison's a forgotten figure now, isn't he? Largely. Very much but so. But even, you're talking 20 years ago, so there would be people there, hippies, kind of would be there and there'd be offerings. And, yeah, yeah. And there's tea lights. Anyway, so a place which has got millions of viewers, there's loads of people there, so I'm needing a pish. The toilet was a piece of corrugated iron, not a, not a structure, just one length of it to keep, keep you out of the wind. Right. A hole... And two bricks to fucking more fear. That's it. This is this is terrifying. There's ones in um, um, in Rotterdam, sitting at a cafe having a fucking pint, a few pints, busting for a piss. I'm like, where's the toilet? The guy says over there. You walk across, and it's just like a kind of carbuncle. Right. You hit a button, and this thing rises out of the toilet, like a thing, a lemon squeezer kind of shape thing. Oh, there was and a guy just. If they just to pee against it. Wasn't there a guy but, in London no, just killed in a toilet? Just stand in pissing. A famous one in London. This is don't, the best I don't one. Like that. This, this, this <laughs> interesting call. Guy went to London. I think it was Soho. Right. Okay. Goes to the pisser. He's peeing. Can how you do mad stuff when you're pissing? You pretend you're like the captain of a ship and you're trying to pee stuff about. No, but carry on. Never mind. <laughs> he's peeing and he's peeing right down the pee hole. Can right yeah, 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 yeah. The, there's an eye looking up at him. He's like, what the fuck? Thinks he's fucking hallucinating. Looks, it's blinking. It's like, fuck. Steps away from it. Goes and gets the manager and says, I, I, he says, I might be mad, but he says, I went for a pee and there's somebody looking at me through the toilet, through the trough, the urinal trough. The guy says, bullshit. I'll come and look. He goes, fucking hell, you're right. So they're like, where the fuck are What are we going to do? So it's a basement area. The manager says, well, there's a crawl space. Opens this little door panel mm-hmm. and here's this shared space between all these pubs and somebody's knocked a hole in the breeze block and there's a fucking pillow this like guy, a Brinks Matt robbery yeah, the guy's been lying on his back oh. on a pillow getting pished on <gasps> could you imagine the pillow oh that's what you need this imagine for imagine ringing that out over the end of Ooh. the day Woo! I once say this is not good for my I, mental I, health I collect my own pee sometimes and the reason being what? I've not done it for a while but I needed it for a patinating bronze. So this is true. So what you do, if, if you've made God. you've made a bronze. You go on about me. Yeah, but you make a bronze, and when the bronze comes out of the fucking process, you crack it open, and there it is. And it's like it's like brassy colour. It's mm-hmm. like very bright. And that's no good to anybody. Is this what you almost got arrested for with your wee cracking open hammer? Yeah, yeah, crack, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cracking metal, yeah. The police came and visited me. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. So, what you need to do is to put a nice patina on a bronze, you need sawdust, but you also need like right fermented down pish. So, you pish in a big kilner jar. Please don't. And you put the lid on tight and you leave it for Where? about a year. Was this left in your. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah, no, a year, a long time. Oh, God. And it just goes through a process and eventually it goes like old tea. It gets dark and crystally. And then you get the bronze. <laughs> And you, you, you stir it into the sawdust, you put the bronze in the middle of it, and then you cap it off with soil or anything and seal it in and leave it for another fucking year or so. And when you open it, the bronze has gone these lovely colours and it's dark and beautiful. But I opened the Kilner jar and you always think, should I smell it? And I think, I'm going to smell it. <laughs> Pure ammonia. Dude. Pure ammonia. Dude. Do you know how I was saying? I've got a jar up there. Come and join us on Patreon. We have lost people today. I'm telling you, we've lost people. If anybody would like, like, like a holy relic, I've got these little containers. I'll they can have some of your pish to patinate the bronzes. How how old is it? Oh, about five years old. It's mainly that is the worst thing I've ever heard. It's crystally. It's crystal. That is the worst thing I've ever heard. It's like salt. You know, after there's been a winter, and it's the salt. You can grow urine crystals. Yeah, you can grow urine. 
my uh, oh my god i had a school teacher i'm not feeling well he was a he was a science teacher i'm not gonna say his name he's an eccentric old dude <laughs> but he had a kind of soluble it was like a saturated solution so no, it was like a, it was potassium permanganate i think okay and he had it in this bucket and he'd a piece of bamboo and a piece of string and he'd, he'd started with a little seed and he formed a crystal because the crystal just it yeah. adheres and it adheres layer but it's like a stalactite a stalactite yeah, yeah. and he fuck it it was the size of a baby's head he'd been making it for like 30 years oh that's lovely it was an interesting process he also used to pick his nose don't at the, listen at the front of the class it was an old school class came with the teacher don't. was up on a platform yeah and he had all these books up so you couldn't see him but you'd see wee gaps and he'd be like that and he'd get a right bogey and he'd turn it into a wee and he'd made pyramids it was like graham hancock they were about three or four this inches is what tall I'm talking about this is what i'm fucking Gi- talking about giant bogey pyramids God, bogey pyramids it's disgusting i was people. a teacher a bit of tissue and he had a toilet and nobody was allowed to use it you had to go back to the main building he didn't it was it was a toilet for everyone no couldn't use it he had to walk all the way back so poor kids bursting for a pee had to go like half a mile back to the school but one of the guys at the school, we took a shit in the toilet on purpose and just left it. And as a man who was making bogey pyramids was like most exertion of his life. He's like, I've got, to, I'm going to find out who it was. He's pretty much smelling my asshole. <laughs> Can when you get a gun? Can the police find it's, a it's gun? It's just been fired. Just been... <laughs> <laughs> it's fuming, but nobody said it. Is. Nobody said it. <laughs> he took us out. He was also our cub leader. <laughs> He's our cub leader. hell. Listen to this. <laughs> so he's just, he was into like canoes and shit, right? So he got us in, oh, he fuck. got, not the canoes, what's the, the what's the, you sat inside them. Is that a canoe? A dinghy. A, no. A canoe. A canoe, a canoe. Yeah. And he took us out to sea. Oh, Jesus. No safety equipment. Of course. Let's go. And we're all like, first time in a canoe in the sea. And the fucking, my thing, you're supposed to learn how to write yourself. No, no, we'd never done that first time in a canoe. In the sea, my canoe just turned upside down. Couldn't get out of it, stuck in it. <laughs> oh, don't, don't complain, nothing serious. That was a cub camp where I broke my arm. It was a long camp, broke it on day one. I was there for a week. Oh, my it God. It says, your arm will be fine. I get back, my mum <laughs> and dad's like that. Me. That arm's squint. Took, went to the doctor. Could he broke his arm about a week ago. Oh, my God. Imagine that now. You broke your arm at a camp. You would sue. My mum and dad were like, "Ah, oh, fuck." Yeah, that's, that's that was part of it. I'm, yeah, I went to the <clears throat> being a kid was dangerous. With the scouts. Yeah, and it was abseiling. Oh, and it was off uh, Devil's Seat. Okay, Pink Seat, whatever you want to call it. Not far. I don't like climbing path. up, but I don't mind coming down. But coming down's fine. Yeah, and we're learning how to abseil. Yeah, right. So do you know what the um, the harness was? You went into a pair of it was knickers. a loop turned like that. You put it on put the thing like if you turned upside down you would have just fell out, fall out right so that was it and the carabiner would go on the figure of eight and do you know what our safety line was it was a loop on a bit of rope and you put it over your under your arms and you just went down and it was four other scouts holding it and letting it out slowly so if you fell you would have pulled down with you that's wild that's what it was and one guy tommy was coming down and this was getting in his way so he put it around his neck to get out of the way and abseiled down and I watched him coming down with this loop around his neck. And that's how I learned how to... And it was about 120 feet. And do you know who was at the bottom? Because when you're abseiling, if you uh, pull it, the rope tight, you can't move. Yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah. So if you fell or anything, there's someone at the bottom, they just pull it and you don't move. Right. They can control your descent. Nobody. He went, you'll be fine, just don't let go. I was 14. That's idiotic. That's I have a slight I have a, true. I have a slight concern back then. All the kind of rational, sensible people were like, mm-hmm. "I'm no fucking volunteering to work with a bunch of fucking kids." And it was the crazies. So the, it was the crazies. It was the guy. It was the failed military people. Yeah. The guy not going to the police. He's like that. Oh, the cubs are similar. Mm-hmm. Our cub leader told us we were like the guard of honor to defend the queen from the IRA and stuff. There was some wild stuff went on. <laughs> it was crazy. No wonder I'm scared. See, at first you yeah. were laughing at me. Now you're this, agreeing. This went on to the early 90s. The kind of gung-ho Then they brought attitude. rules in. There was a kid died on holiday. Yeah. I think there was maybe two kids died down in a, a school trip in England. Uh, and they thought, hold on a minute. Then this they started is, doing police checks on people. This is dangerous. Nobody was there. 
fucking they were all guns. Out. To, they still give guns to maniacs. Yeah. You have no. Our foreign listeners, this country is mercifully low on guns. Mm-hmm. There's not many guns at all. But a lot of people who have guns are still nutters. That's true. Oh, well, hold on, hold on. You must remember, this is something that's never talked about, especially yeah. internationally. People don't know this. Yeah. That we have cadets. Yeah. And the cadets, mm-hmm. you give children military arms. You go, there's a rocket launcher and a tank, off you go. And now, it was that bad. My brother, many, many years ago, was in it, and he came home with a rifle. They didn't know it was missing. He came home with a rifle, and my, uh, my uh, dad had, what the fuck, got him way back again with it. Just came home with it. They didn't even notice fuck it was missing. It. How the hell did we manage to win a war? <laughs> no, honestly. <laughs> They, it's because they were worse than us. Yes, they were more idiotic. That's what they say. Us. You don't, you don't win a war. Someone yeah. loses a war. Yeah, and that's exactly what happens. It was no. But I remember as a kid, you'd wander about with your rifles slung over your shoulder. I would go around on my bike yeah. with my air rifle down to the front. Nobody it's now, uh, they now, uh, what's it called when you're not allowed to hunt? And yeah, birds are, it's yeah. Like a sanctuary. Yeah, now. yeah, it's yeah. A beautiful place. All the reeds and that. But I used to go down. I'd cycle down, mm-hmm. and I did get stopped by the police once. Right. And he goes, "Is that a shotgun?" Oh. And I went, "No." I went air rifle and ah, oh, you can still shoot us. My mate's looking for some people to clear his barn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the only time he just went, ah, oh, I was hoping it was a shotgun. Yeah, fuck. And he was, he wouldn't have been surprised that I was carrying a shotgun on a yeah, bike. Yeah, not, just, yeah. Not a, not a problem. But a few things happened and they've yeah. timed up. My dad, he had a shotgun. He'd go shoot and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he was just in a box under the bed. Yeah. As a safety measure, he kept the shells and the, gu- the gun separate. Yeah. So me and my brother couldn't that quite was, shoot ourselves. That was the law. And it, but then, towards the end of his gun ownership, he had to have a lot box, and he had has to, to be an insurance. And the police came one. and visited, yeah. Yeah. and none of this is bad. This is all good. Yeah, no, I but totally agree. What I'm saying agree. is, they still have crazy people. In the last couple of years, people who are off their fucking heads have gun licenses, legally entitled to have a gun. It's like because there's no guns here now at there's all. There's no guns, and you don't even get air rifles in Scotland no. now. They Some of the air rifles it. were game, or a wee bit. Powerful. But the problem is, well, the problem is with an air rifle. Is there were twelve foot pounds that of, of, yeah, and that's it. There's probably more. You would kid, need a lot a of kids firearm. Mean, mean yeah. well, and not as many as you think, right. because what had happened in the last few years, air rifles had changed from the cheap things you could yeah. buy in a shop yeah. to very expensive guns, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they weren't just brake barrels and springers anymore. Like they were all pest control gas. Yeah, thing. you needed the gas. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, needed to go yeah. and get your tank filled up and yeah, all this yeah. sort of thing. Yeah. So guns were averaging a thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was people who were doing it as a hobby. It wasn't just you picked the gun up and shot your mate in the eye. Yeah. So the fact you need a shotgun certificate now to have an air rifle, I think it was a bit excessive. Yeah. You've turned this... Now, I'm not all pro-gun either. This is the thing. But you've turned guns into this, oh, they're this terrifying thing, you know? When they got rid of handguns and everything after uh, Dumblain and that, nobody cared. No, people, there's no need for handguns. There was no need for them, so they just went and nobody complained. Yeah, shotgun's a tool, it's an implement. Yeah. You need a, if you're going to be a farmer, you need a shotgun. Yeah. But it's like like I told you, I used to... shooting at people that's on your land. Exactly. I used to shoot my bow. Ramblers. And the only time people approach you, went, oh, that's cool, and what's it all about? And they'd be dead interested. Nowadays. Then overnight, they just went, no, I'm scared of you now. Yeah. And I got the police called on me, and yeah. the guy come down. Don't worry, we're just, you know, he know. knew he knew who it was. And I had mm. a target shooting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was in a safe place, and My, yeah, the beach, miles yeah. away from anything. Uh, yeah. b- below the waterline, put a target, and I was just target shooting. And the guy was like, "Don't worry, we're just, you know." Yeah. But they put me off because yeah, you know this is going to happen more and every more. time. Yeah, and people are suddenly like, "Oh, you're dangerous because you've got your target." You bow. do look a bit dangerous. It's hard to shoot. And it's fun. I love, I love archery and yeah, stuff okay, like that. Okay. And I'm not scared of that, but I'm scared of the police getting called on me. Well, uh, Ladies and gentlemen. Well, that was a right varied little thing. Fear. And now I've got five more ones. We should be scared of our listeners. That's what I'm <laughs> I am I'm scared of our listeners. I am scared. Yeah, and some of their interests. I'm scared of them all. Well, and again, I'm join away, us on Patreon. I'm back to work. For, for, for the price of a, a generic... You could buy two things of own brand tomato sauce. And you can get two of these. Two of them. and uh, That's nothing. Nothing. To support this, to support this artistic them. endeavor. And it is. We call it that all the time. It's it really pe- is. The people who have been here from the <clears throat> ground floor. The, the, we like to call them a Praetorian guard. 
Well, I call them motherfuckers. Yeah. But they have been here since the start, and we appreciate every one of you. And on top of that, if you look back on the old videos, you can watch us develop. Develop. And then we're going into our next... In the next few months... The next phase. The next phase. It's going to be very exciting. This, this is a pupil stage. We're going to emerge from the chrysalis triumphant. Just... Yes. Respl resplendent. Just brand new. Ah! Like a... Like... Yeah, no. Okay. Ah! God, you're it's so... It's a noise to play. Ladies and gentlemen, until enjoy, next enjoy time. Enjoy your day. I'm away to work. Later. Ta-da, ta-da.